Last week, ESPN's Tim Bontemps wrote that league sources expect Toronto to move on from two-time All-Star forward Pascal Siakam before the trade deadline. This was a part of Tim Bontemps' article on OG and the RJ quickly trade between the Knicks and Raptors. Well, Jake Fisher added that while Atlanta was once considered the most aggressive suitor for Siakam's services, chatter among NBA executives now has a potential landing spot for Spicy P to go to Indiana or Sacramento or Detroit. So, TK, you get us started here. How many buckets of slop are you giving to the Siakam expected to be dealt before the deadline? I'm giving it four buckets of slop because this is a sloppy scenario. (laughs) Uh, I do believe because Siakam, I think you could probably call him the hottest commodity uh, on the trade market right now, considering he's got a championship in his past. He's an all NBA player. He's been great this season. Looks really nice uh, next to Quickly and Barnes there. Uh, But Siakam has also been in the mix, which is why I can't go for five slops. You cannot go for five slops with Masai Ujiri. It's very obvious (laughs) that he could keep this guy, especially because Siakam basically has like a junior no trade clause. Being an expiring contract, you got to work it out with the front office of the other team ahead of time, knowing he's going to resign, which has hurt uh, his market. Apparently, him threatening not to re-sign with Sacramento basically killed that deal, yeah. which, take it or leave it, for the Raptors if you're really excited about Davion Mitchell. Uh, but there's also been some weird handling of Siakam, it yep. feels like. Uh, Josh Lewenberg over at TSN reported that they basically had no contact with him over the summer. Uh, the Raptors released that phone call of Masai chatting on the phone with Emmanuel quickly, talking up Scotty Barnes so much, no mention of Pascal Siakam. All of these leaks that come out seem to me – Raptors themed trying to drum up interest for Siakam because I think the fact that he has that no that uh, expiring contract probably is hurting the return coming back for Toronto here. So if the deal's not there, you even heard Brian Windhurst say it today on the Hoop Collective, they're not against signing him to a, to another extension. Yeah, and then maybe moving him. Because, yeah, yeah, because the team would be much more mm-hmm. interested, obviously, having him under control. Uh, but you only go two buckets here, a slot. Yeah, the slop the slop scale is perfect for Pascal Siakam. It feels like this is this is a nice slop uh, to get talking about. But I'm going down low. I know there has been talk, but I think the OG Ananobi trade has changed it a little bit for him. He's shooting a lot more. He is feeling like the number one guy. I know Scotty Barnes is technically the number one guy, and they Darko didn't quick, mention him at all in that uh, rant there last night. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I think they've done that before with. With Siakam, he doesn't need to be motivated as much by a, by a coach or whoever. The guy is just a former champion. He's just great. He's an all-NBA player. He's great. I think less crowding on the wing seems to help than now that they got rid of OG Ananobi. He's having fun, it feels like. Him and Masai are definitely connected. I know there have been some odd phone call releases, but I do think they're boys and... Uh, He's going to be 30 when it comes to free agent time here. He's turning 30. I think he's going to look at the old license and say, I'm 30 years old. I'm going to stay here for he's a while. He's going to look at his license? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm 30. Uh, does he want to leave Toronto a great city? I think they'll sign him to a nice deal. Now, it's not going to be a max deal. He may get some more from somebody else, but I, I think he likes Toronto. So this is this is at a great scale because literally I could see a trade happening. It doesn't seem like Siakam wants to leave. I agree with you on that. It seems yeah. like they're kind of ushering him out the door here. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, it depends on how much they want to pay. I guess I, I think that comes. That's going to be a factor um, because somebody else may pay him more. Uh, I, 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 I personally think to to go with to what Trey was saying. If Siakam was under a three year deal right now like still had years left on his contract like look, if Siakam had a Wiggins contract more money but you know obviously uh, the length of it he would have been traded because he'd be he is the hottest commodity you can add that guy to almost any team helps your chances to win a championship this year for these squads like whoever it may be but it is this issue of like damn we're not going to trade a bunch of draft capital and a bunch of young prospects which obviously the Raptors would want to pair with Barnes and quickly and RJ moving forward why would we do that he may leave we're not going to do that for three, four months uh, of potentially this guy unless they felt confident they could sign him. So that's the the issue here. So maybe the Raptors' best bet would just be, hey, come to an agreement, sign him, and then look to trade him. It's not like you can't trade him then. And you'll probably get better deals for your own own organization, the Raptors, I would think. When he's 30, but, sign to a long deal. 
Yeah, I mean, does he look like he's over the hill and washed? No, he's going to play I'm the exact same way for three years, probably, right? Like three, four years. I don't see why he's going to change that much. Person, unless he got injured, of course. That goes for everybody. I, I think this team is going to be good without P- Pascal Siakam, uh, and, and the draft picks aren't going to be great internally. Like, they're going to have picks like they got – for Pascal Siakam in the 20s, probably. I think the team's going to be decent. So it's going to be hard to get good from there. So I say, why not keep the guy? I understand your thinking in terms of having a guy under a long-term deal and dealing him and getting lots back for him. They could have done that a couple of years ago with everybody. OG and Nobi, Scotty Barnes, and Pascal Siakam. They didn't, so do they regret that? I think because they made a decent deal with OG and Nobi where they got two youngish players here that are going to be part of a, a decent team. Listen, it's fun to be a Raptors fan with an, a 500 team. So this team's going to be 500. I wish we were 500. Yeah, baby. They're going to get up to 500. They're going to be a 41-win team. You're going to enjoy going down to the Scotiabank Arena and cheering for that team, I think. Yeah, but the t- tickets are a little expensive. There's no doubt. <laughs> uh, related news to this. This isn't on the slop scale here, but uh, according to Bodog, the Mavs are the favorites to land Siakam in a trade if the Raptors decide to move on from him before the deadline. Dallas, top odds at plus 150, followed by the Grizzlies at plus 250 and the Pacers at plus 450. I uh, just thought that was a strange little... I know, that, I know Dallas had been linked to Siakam, and then it sounded like they weren't. Um, you know, who are... Who, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Rashawn Holmes? I mean, is that going to move the needle there? I wouldn't think so. You think the Raps want more? But I will say the Mavericks, Nico Harrison, he's made two... Pretty big moves are the last two deadlines, right? Not afraid to make big deals. Two years ago, he traded Porzingis for uh, Dinwiddie and Bertons, I guess, at the 2022 deadline. And then last year, obviously, trades for Kyrie Irving uh, for Dinwiddie and DFS. And there's a bunch of other things involved in that. But, yeah, maybe maybe he makes another aggressive play here in trying to get Siakam. I just don't know what it would be uh, in return. Cause you, apparently, you nailed it. Uh, yeah. you're, get, you're getting salary filler and probably yeah. a pick. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I mean... The Mavs should do that. I think I, Tim Hardaway Jr. has actually been pretty solid for them this year. Rashawn Holmes, they brought him in basically as a trade piece uh, at draft day. And I think the Mavs are a team like, even if you don't have assurances from Siakam that he wants to resign going forward, you've got a young superstar in Luka Doncic. you got a great number two in Kyrie Irving. And they're not going to have to give up a ton of their future going forward. They're a team that I think could convince Siakam to sign long-term if they want to take a rental on him now. Right. Yeah, I just think that... Other teams probably have a lot more, more at least, than what the Mavs would be willing, uh, unless teams aren't willing to trade for a guy who's going to become a free agent here. Yeah, they're not. I mean, the Kings are like, here's Harrison Barnes. Any interest? Maybe Mitchell. Like, they're not, they don't, no Monk, no, obviously no Keegan Murray. Uh, I guess the rumors I've seen with the Mavericks are like, we're not even including Green. You want Green? Nah, he's off the table. It's like, you're, Trey's right. Like, they're getting low balled to death here because. I hate to say it, they probably, if they were going to move off Siakam, should have done it prior to this season and would have got probably a really good return for him. Uh, and they've waited too long, so now they're in the predicament of, oh, damn, we might just have to sign this guy again and hope his, then somebody is desperate and gives a bunch of draft picks and a bunch of young players. Because yeah. he's a player of that capability. Like he's, I'm not saying he should get four first-round picks. Should probably be more than one from the Dallas Mavericks, I think, Siakam. Yeah, and if but it's the Mavericks pick, it's literally the Mavericks pick. And it's not going to be good because they have Luka Doncic on their team. It's going to be whether it's a first round, it's not. It's going to be in the high teens at the very best. Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably going to be in the twenties. So if you're talking picks, talk a good pick. Uh, that's what I'm. I'm thinking. If I'm, I think they missed the boat on that. That's potential. Yeah, they're yeah. not getting as good a return as they could have gotten. And signing him going forward, they're in the Zach Levine situation. We're like, he's good. He's really good. But he signed for a gigantic deal, and he's at the end of his prime and Siakam's two years older than Levine Mm -hmm. Levine like the Bulls will be happy to get one first round pick this year Mm -hmm. and I think that's what the Raptors are going to be looking at too yeah I guess they'll say to Siakam hey 30 mil how about that and we'll produce a show for you and Scotty Barnes (laughs) you guys are the stars that'll be good I mean they like he used to be on Serge Ibaka's show they're they're gonna give him not a raise (laughs) <laughs> yeah. sign him for 30 it's not, million. not even a chance and this is the fear that he's just going to leave completely and then you're left going damn I guess we should have taken uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. <laughs> Rashawn Holmes and a pick at pick uh, you know in the late teens yeah because we got we got nothing yeah when I said 30 that that is quite the the cut because he's making 37 now but you know if they can work something 
Off the table. That's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking. But off the, uh, ta- <laughs> off the table, a, a, a like series fifty instead of sixty. We will give you an open gym uh, yeah, special. I mean, something. I don't think that's going to do it. I think Pascal's going to love Toronto. If it's a long term deal, yeah, it depends on how much. How much do you think somebody else is signing Pascal to? At thirty years of age, entering free agency, more than thirty. Not a great free agency class. Yeah. Yeah. We have a little talk. Thirty-two. How about thirty-two plus a TV show? That's still a that's still a pay cut. Yeah, he's gonna get over man. forty. You're, he's gonna get over forty long. easily. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. yeah. You were you're saying OG's gonna get close to forty. How yeah. are you then turning around and well, saying? Well, he's far younger. So I mean, Siakam's far better. Absolutely, so, he's much better. Yeah. 